Hello everyone. Good morning. Thank you for joining our session today. Um, it, I know it's 9:30 a.m., but looking into the participants, I think there are a lot who are just joining. So let's give uh, maybe two to three minutes for other attendees to join. Then we can start. All right, hello and welcome to today's knowledge sharing session, a case of Grameen Foundation's Women Link program. Thank you for everyone who's taking time to join us today. I know it's a very interesting time for all of us and I hope every one of you are staying safe and healthy. So let me introduce myself first. I am Erica Sale, a program specialist from Grameen Foundation and I will be moderating for today's session. Before we officially begin, just a few housekeeping reminders from our end. The duration of this webinar will be for an hour, and I hope everyone can stay with us throughout the session. The webinar will be uh, recorded and will be available on demand for all the participants. During the session, we'd love to hear from you, so please feel free to put in any questions and feedback in the Q&A um, chat box or or the chat box. There are two chat boxes in the Zoom panel, so you can freely choose to put in those questions and feedback in the Q and A, or choose the or choose the chat function. Um, yep. So for those who are just joining us, we are glad to have participants from the private sector, representatives from the government organizations and agencies, local and international NGOs, academe. And of course, I'm seeing key partners of Grameen Foundation from its agriculture programs and financial services sector. So microfinance institutions and our fin key financial technology providers, thank you so much for joining us today. Today, you'll hear from a panel of speakers. So this includes representatives from Grameen Foundation to briefly introduce the organization's work on economic empowerment and how we leverage on transformational use of digital technology or technology in our various programming. And of course, we will share the insights and highlights from the three-year implementation of Women Link program. We will also have representative from St. Elizabeth Community Development Program, Inc., or SECDEP, 
to share with us their experience. Um, the current needs and gaps of women groups that they serve with and what are the efforts made towards res- resilience and sustainability through digitalization. And last but not the least, represented by Action.Able Inc., this webinar will also highlight the various strategies of financial technology providers to respond to the urgent need for digital transformation given the exponential increase of such services during the COVID-19 pandemic. We really have a full hour ahead of us. So without further ado, let me introduce our first two speakers. The first speaker will be Amelia Kuklevics. Amelia is our Regional Director for Latin America, Caribbean, and Asia. And she will be briefly introducing Grameen Foundation and our three um, programs. And following her quickly will be Kim Panonshalman Billiones, Women Link Philippines Program Manager, to present the insights and findings of the program. Amelia, when you are ready. Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here with you today. Uh, I hope everyone's doing very well, and I'm joining you here from Quito, Ecuador. Um, so I'll start out by just talking a little bit about Green Foundation and, and why this program is so important. If I could have the next slide, please. One more. And one more. <laughs> Thank you. So here at Grameen, we're really focused and our vision is is seeing a world free of poverty. We're focused on the poor, especially women entrepreneurs, to help them live without poverty and hunger. We combine a people plus technology approach. And part of our main goal since 2016 is to reach 25 million people by the year 2025. We're at 13 million, so we're really happy that all of you are joining us today. Um, You're helping us achieve this goal. If I can have the next slide, please. As you can see, we're very focused on using data and and using technology to really leverage our approach. So here you can see a handful of our signature programs, which include our digital farming technology, our, our mobile money, our women's economic empowerment projects, and the community agents network and model that we'll be speaking about today. Next slide, please. Grameen, as you may or may not know, has always supported women entrepreneurs, even from the early days with microcredits. Uh, Through our innovative community agent model approach, we're supporting not only women entrepreneurs with a technology enabled business, but we're also bringing financial services and inclusions in inclusion to the communities they serve. On average, each community agent is serving 150 families. As we can see in this slide, it's bringing access to a number of digital financial tools, mobile bill pay, transfers, banking, loans, connections, and information. So we're really proud to present this model. It's very innovative. Next slide, please. Our Philippines team has really been a pioneer in this community agent model. They support with recruitment, training, and offer a suite of digital financial services. All of this is to support the ecosystems in the communities that we serve. We really hope that through this model, we'll be able to improve market engagement. We're focusing on improving gender equality, the information and expertise through our training that we're providing through these, through these models and uh, the suite of, of digital financial products and services, as well as peer support. We see this combination as a way to have sustainable change in the communities and really have transformative efforts. I'd like to thank SecDev and Posible for joining us on this journey as a crucial partner committed for, to women entrepreneurs and the communities that they serve. Thank you so much. Okay, thanks for that, Amelia. Um, thank you also to Erica. So good morning and good evening to all. My name is Kim Panashalman Billiones. I'm the program manager for Women Link Year 3 Philippines. And today I'll present a brief introduction to the program, as well as the relevant insights gained for project implementation. 
Women Link is a three-year program supported by Wells Fargo. It was launched in 2017 and continued on until this year in 2020. The project aims to catalyze economic empowerment through the breakthrough use of digital financial services, or DFS, among poor and low-income women. WomenLink aims to solve the problem of DFS offerings being inaccessible and underused among certain populations, such as low-income women, despite the considerable growth of available options such as mobile money, agent-assisted, and self-service financial products, channels, and applications. Low digital and financial literacy among low-income women are one of the barriers to uptake and habitual use of these digital channels. This means that uh, although they have access to these digital alternatives, they are unable to necessarily use DFS to reap its benefits of convenience as it is accessible through a mobile phone and time and cost efficiency as they will not need to go to a bank or buy a center to process the transaction. For the first year of Women Link in 2018, the following were the components of the project. First was the usability research to identify the remaining or new barriers and stepping stones to the uptake and trust of DFS. Uh, so this report is available on our website for those who are interested to learn more about this. And then another was to register 20,000 women for an SMS blast campaign to send bi-weekly messages for a duration of six months. And this would help them to reinforce their understanding, uh, usage and uptake of DFS and enhance their digital financial literacy. As an introduction to DFS, SMS messages were a convenient and accessible medium for the recipients to become more familiar with mobile technology. Uh, the actual reach for year one implementation was 21,184 women recipients, wherein a total of 274, 350 SMS messages were sent. And from this uh, SMS blast campaign sent to these 21,000 women, the following were the significant results. The first is a positive behavior change in terms of saving habits. Second is increased adoption in financial services. And third was a high positive perception of the SMS financial information. And coming from our learnings from year one of Women Link, three pillars were identified that are assumed to lead to trust in digital financial services. As evidenced by our activities in year one, one is the Women Link Financial Literacy Program for low income women, or uh, this would be the demand side of the equation, while the other two pillars focus more on the supply side or the community agents. Uh, as mentioned by Amelia earlier, community agents are micro entrepreneurs in the community that offer digital financial services to their community members. Uh, an example of this are Sari Sari store owners that offer bills payment, e loading, and remittance services to their customers. These community agents are instrumental in introducing DFS to clients as well-known and trusted members of their community. They offer their customers a positive experience on the use of DFS because this diminishes any wariness from the client's own internal evaluation of risks involved in transacting through DFS. To support these community agents, another pillar is the agent professionalization program so that the clients are able to access good quality customer service and a seamless DFS transaction experience through those agents. And these are the three pillars that are assumed to lead to increased trust in DFS. Uh, building on the lessons learned from the first year of the Women Link program, year two worked to enhance digital financial literacy and uptake on both the supply side or the agent side and the demand side or the client side. Year two had the following components. On the agent side is the agent professionalization, where in training through e-learning modules and available social media platforms for easy access were conducted. Our technology platforms include GLEAP or the Grameen Learning Application, which is an Android-based e-learning platform collaboratively set up by the Grameen Foundation India and Philippine teams. Next is our Facebook agent learning program, Given the high traction of social media usage in the Philippines, uh, Grameen utilized Facebook's group feature to create a learning environment for the agents. And lastly was the SMS campaign, building on the success of using short but actionable messages from Women in Year One. Uh, an SMS-based campaign aligned with the training materials was implemented. To train and educate 
agents on how to better run and sustain their agency business, an agent professionalization toolkit was developed. On the client side, we registered another 20,000 women onto our SMS campaign to similarly receive our digital financial literacy training. And the actual reach for year two was 21,408 women recipients that received 290,804 SMS messages on the client side, while 379 agent learners were onboarded under agent professionalization program for the demand side. The following were the key insights from our year two implementation. Our learners shared that the modules have helped them manage their businesses more effectively, handhold their device better, and engage with their customers. And consistently, agents report having the highest retention on customer-related topics, such as profiling and handling customers. And results from the interviews revealed that learning is motivation, motivated by the social aspect of the learning platforms, wherein there's a preference to sign up for the Facebook social learning group as it allows them to actively engage with other agents in the online community, conversing on DFS business-related topics. Lastly, another insight was to expand the content of the agent toolkit by focusing on new products and troubleshooting basics as more experienced agents are interested in information on how they can improve their business, such as marketing strategies and information on new products and services that they can offer, as well as assistance on resolving uh, technical difficulties. For year three, the team set to pilot key elements necessary to turn the Community Agent Network program into a self-sustaining social enterprise, providing the following fee-based services. So first is the training of community agents under our agent professionalization program. Second would be the management, supervision, and monitoring of agents. And last is the development and expansion of agent networks. From our learnings from WomenLink, we plan to work towards enhancing digital financial literacy, promotion of good business practices, and empowerment of entrepreneurs, as we believe that by delivering quality service, more women, women and their households will be able to partake in the digital space and increase their uptake as well as access to financial services. Under year three, the following were implement, implementing partners. For our fintech partners, this includes Possible or Action Able and DigiPay, wherein we enrolled existing Possible and DigiPay agents that started their agency business this year. For our other partners, Paymaya, Grab, and SecDep, we targeted a set of women to onboard them as new community agents, specifically under WomenLink. Um, under Grab, this includes um, female relatives of Grab drivers based in NCR or Metro Manila, onboarded as DigiPay agents. And under SecDep, uh, the Women Microfinance Institution or MFI members based in Iloilo were onboarded as Paymaya Negotia agents. So we will hear later uh, more from um, Action Able and, and SecDep. The, the following describe the demographic profile of our average year three agent. So 85% of them are female. Uh, the mean age is 37 years old and 87% are at least high school graduates. 58% are married and 74% have prior business experience. Um, as of November 2020, we had um, onboarded a total of 470 agents through our e-learning platforms on GLEAP and Facebook. Similar to year two, the agents' key learnings from our training include how to deal with customers, including what services to offer depending on their needs, as well as maintaining client relationships. Another takeaway was the increase in their business management skills, which covers cash flow monitoring and record keeping. Amidst the COVID-19 pandemic, our agents were faced with challenges in conducting their agency business, similar to other individual and micro, -entrepreneur, micro entrepreneurs around the globe. First is the lack of requirements that agents would need in order to expand their services. And an example of this is the requirement for business permits to conduct uh, money remittance services. Given the travel restrictions and imposed lockdowns by the government, there's been an increase in demand for money remittances and agents that lack the necessary requirements will not be able to expand their business and offer this service. Second is the lack of capital to sustain their current product offering 
things and fund other services. Uh, due to COVID, capital that may have initially been budgeted for their business had to be reallocated to more urgent family needs due to changes in income sources, such as loss of employment. And lastly, there are some agents who have experienced a lower range of income during the pandemic compared to the months before the lockdowns, as some of their customers may not necessarily have the means to avail of their services due to similar negative impacts to their income sources. But despite these challenges, um, the role of community agents were underscored during the community lockdowns as they were able to provide faster and cheaper services to, that their communities wouldn't have been able to access without their business, especially um, e-loading, bills payment, and money remittance. The majority of our agents see themselves continuing their agency business until next year, not only for additional income, but to also provide service to their loyal customers. To respond to this challenge of low capital and address the urgent needs of our community agents, an additional activity was implemented under Women Link this year. This would be the COVID-19 response liquidity support. A total of 38 community agents were selected to pre-fund their e-wallets with 5,000 pesos or approximately 103 uh, US dollars to support them in jump-starting or expanding their agency business. Aside from their transactional activity, the pandemic also compromised the amount of time that women agents can allocate for their learning modules. Uh, women play multiple roles due to the permeability between work and family, especially during 2020, given the situation brought forth by the COVID-19 pandemic, hence lessening the time they can allot for extracurricular activities. The presence of children below 10 years old and senior citizens in the households of our year three agents at 49% and 55% respectively also affect the amount of time that they can put because of the unpaid work that they have to provide for the family. Our team's recommendation for future implementations include the following. As agents, for industry, industry stakeholders to prioritize the sustainability of the agency business, which requires uh, sufficient capital, a good revenue stream, and a range of DFS customers so that they may lead to expansion of their business and to resolve DFS-related concerns, such as device or application issues, turnaround time of customer service inquiries, and requirements needed to add services. This would be to maintain a good working relationship between the agents and the partners. And as learners, it would be reasonable to tier the agents and customize trainings according to their profile of pre-existing business experience and knowledge, educational attainment, and availability of capital and resources. Furthermore, other synchronous sessions such as webinars and asynchronous methods of delivery of the training modules, including recorded vid videos and printed materials, should be explored to attend to the challenges in time allocation and technological, technological bandwidth of the agents. As we approach the end of our three-year Women Link implementation, Grameen Foundation continues to encourage a multi-stakeholder collaboration to improve on the adoption and usage of digital financial services around the Philippines. Increased trust in the system would not be possible without the partners, partnership and linkage among various stakeholders that play key roles in promoting digital financial services, including financial technology providers, telecommunications companies, merchants that integrate into the digital space, um, government, non-government organizations, community groups, and other relevant stakeholders. We invite those that would wish to partner with us moving forward as we plan our future activities and set up our social enterprise to please get in touch with us through our contact details, which will be shared at the end of the webinar. Uh, so that would be the end of my presentation. Uh, thank you everyone for coming today and I hope we are able to provide you with new insights from this webinar. Um, Erica? Over to you. Thank you, Amelia and Kim, for sharing more on Grameen's work, especially highlighting the insights of the Women Link program. So, from the insights shared by Kim, we we're able to establish the need for the digital financial services or DFS, especially agent assisted or over the counter transactions, despite the wide range of self use platforms in the market. 
Um, going back to the term used earlier by Amelia, community agents or community agent network is a key strategy used not just maybe by Grameen Foundation in, in, in its various programming, but it's basically putting a human face in technology. While digitalization is a buzzword, has been for the past few years and more so this year as we all shifted online, it is good to be aware that not everyone can be ready for this transformation. There remains to be key barriers for uptake, both on the client side and on the demand side from the presentation of Kim. And to share with us the client journey on digital transformation, let me introduce you our next speaker, Ms. Luz Coronado, Executive Director of SecDep, to present the opportunities as well as the current needs and gaps of the women groups that they are working with. Ms. Luz, when you are ready. Yes, good morning, everyone. Thank you, Grameen Foundation, for inviting me to this webinar and to be able to share with you what is SecDep and what we are doing, our journey into the digital world. So SecDep Incorporated, it's a, the complete name is St. Elizabeth Community Development Program. It's a microfinance in Joe, uh, located in Haro, Iloilo, Ilo, City. So we were registered uh, with Securities and Exchange Commission last March 2000, and we only operate in the island of Panay, provinces of Iloilo, Ilo, Guimaras, Capiz, Rojas, and Antique. As an NGO and a microfinance institution, we have only a small outreach of 11,972 clients, of whom 99% are women who live in rural areas. So we provide financial services such as loans and savings and the non-financial services. Next slide. Like, um, calamity assistance during disasters, trainings and community development, medical missions, and scholarships. So we cater to this activity. So going forward into our journey on the digital world, so we've been uh, encouraging our clients to use ATMs. So in uh, to be able to release our loans so we could not be the risk of the transfer of money and also the risk of the clients uh, going to uh, the branches to claim their money. So we encourage them. So gradually, uh, we introduced ATM for the facilitation of loan releases since 2012. And finally, we were able to reach 100% on 2016. So we had a lot of struggles also in this um, effort. The, the resistance of the clients in doing the ATMs. There are a lot of pitfalls to that we were not, we had some problems. So aside from loan release, now uh, after four years after we had now established, like they are already used to using ATMs and they are uh, gradually we, we, we educate them how we are going to how the uh, open up. Uh, ATMs in the bank partner that we have. Now again, our problem again is um, the loan repayment. So as we are trying to digitize the loan repayment from our clients, we again encountered a lot of struggles, especially now in this pandemic. So during this COVID-19 pandemic, where digital mode of payment is highly encouraged, it took us some time to convince our clients to consider the idea of paying loans on a digital platform because um, it is hard to go to the areas because of lockdowns and also because of the danger of transmission if you go to the areas. So the staff are still just stay there in the branches doing, contacting them, uh, doing uh, SMS, sending text messages and calling them. But despite this risk, they would still want to meet, meet face to face with other women in the community, which we disagreed in compliance to government safety protocols. We, they really would like to see, and even they demand for the presence of the staff because uh, they are doubtful if they pay 
without the presence of the staff in the field, they money that might get lost. So uh, that again of explanation to them. So those are struggles that we have. So uh, for, fortunately, we were able to explain to them fully what benefit it could give them if they would only try this new venture. Although not all our clients and engage in this mode of payment, we are still developing some strategies to motivate uh, our client, other clients to make use of this advancement in technology to their benefits. So doing this digital way, so a lot of struggles that we're handling. Next slide. So with all those struggles that we have, we are happy and grateful to have a partner like Grameen Foundation who have been guiding and supporting us in our journey towards digitalization. Yes, years ago we have been research and trials was done. And this year we see the positive responses from our selected agents, maybe because due to this pandemic, they don't have other choices, but maybe also due to constant reminders, constant motivation and constant education, they were able to accept, but not all. So the training and the support coming from the foundation was really a big help for us, both morally, economically, and helping our clients to save their business. So our clients had feedbacks like, they now know how to budget their money. They know how to manage their business and they are happy going back and learning from the G lift that Garmin had uh, opened them. So they go back to that uh, modules and review and practice it in their family. So they are really, uh, it was really so useful to them. And also when the, um, when the hard copy of the module was sent to them, they are so thankful because at times they don't have connections. So those are challenges that we are facing. But the hard copy that was given to them was so useful that they can a sort of they can review what they had learned and, and again again apply what they have read. So those are the happy moments or the the advantages that they get from being. The community agents. So this is a picture of our uh, agent, one of our agent. So we are hopeful that this act of service will create a ripple effect that in the long run they would pass on these great opportunities to also help the people in the respective community. So we have each branch that we have, we have one, we, we piloted that we have one community agent. It's a sort of um, a model in the brands we're in. If uh, there are resistance among the client, we can pinpoint you. You look at yours, he's doing this, and you can use, you can try. And in fact, you know, we are also using the, among the staff, all the staff in the branches, all, all our brands, managers, and the selected or the management people, we encourage them to use this digital so that if they met the client, they can also educate, they can also explain how is it working. So without practice, you cannot say anything unless otherwise you're doing it yourself. So this is another client. She says that uh, it, it's in, in, in the local language, antes ako nang in agent, ang kita ko gusto lang sa gasto. Sa so, nag-agent ako, nag-expand ang ako negosyo, Kaya nag-aingganyo sa mga customers na magbayad sa ilang mga bills kag money transfers. Salamat sa pag-alala isang sekdep kag Ramin. So it says uh, that before he, he was not, uh, before he enrolled or he was doing the business, the income is just enough for the expenses. But later when he's already doing the business, having this uh, application, uh, she already expand her business because she encourages or enticed around people in the community to pay their bills 
through her. So it increases her income. So she's very thankful through the support and guidance of SECDEP and our partner, Grameen Foundation. So our collaboration with other entities can make a stride to, turn up, to attain our plans that in, net, in the next two years, we can digitalize our mode of collection. We just, we're very hopeful that we cannot do ourselves alone. We know we are not expert, we have, we're not so ticky. So collaboration with the people who has the, the capacity or who has the expertise is very, very useful for us. So thank you, Grameen Foundation. Thank you for this opportunity. And thank you for supporting us in this uh, endeavor, our journey towards digitalizing our clients or our operation and also our clients, uh, teaching them how to be able to do these things for the good and the good also for the health in the community. Thank you everyone and I hope I have shared my experience or our experience our partnership with Carmen and doing our journey in digital world. Thank you and good morning again. Thank you so much, Ms. Luz, for that very informative session and for painting us a good picture of both the client and the agent side. But first, let me highlight first what you have shared on the client side. So thank you for really like pissing it out on us and what is uh, on the need for first digital education and then after that digital financial education it's like um from your experience the transformation is really not easy as depositing a cash or a bank account or to an e-wallet as maybe most of us in this webinar experience it to be so um, with the MFI members, such as the women groups that SECDEP um, is working with right now, they are really used to the tangibility of money. So even with the, um, the COVID-19 risk, they are more willing to, um, to pair their loans face-to-face -face, um, out of the fear um, that they might lose their money if they will not be paying it um, on hand or basically the tangibility of cash or the actual act of receiving and handling it for payments it, because it provides solace to these women the transactions are really made. From what, uh, what has been shared by Ms. Luz, definitely digitalization was faced with reluctance as the members um, fear the loss of tangibility of their cash because these are hard-earned money for these women entrepreneurs, especially um, in difficult times such as now. So, um, and, and just to um, discuss it more thoroughly, imagine having your cash in your wallet or in your pocket. So that means that the one step away, you're one step away from your hard earned cash. And imagine depositing it to a cash, uh, depositing your cash to a bank account. So that means that you would be at least two steps away. So you will need your actual ATM card and of course a functioning ATM machine for you to access your cash. Um, or maybe right now, uh, a POS device to, to use that ATM card to, to buy any goods. But imagine what will be the transition if you will be using a mobile money or an e-money e -money wallet platform. So that would be more than three or five steps away because you will need um, a mobile phone, an internet, and then of course the technical know-how on how to use that, that technology to be able to access your money. So um, this is really a journey, and thank you so much, Ms. Luz, for, for really laying it out to us based on your experience. And to address such concerns as presented by SECDEP, digital education and digital financial literacy are key to make the journey and acceptance of digital transformation possible. And in building that digital ecosystem, it is not a one-time effort. Borrowing from the words of Ms. Luz earlier, it requires a constant effort of educating the clients. She mentioned doing the transition into the ATM for the loan releases only to, to, to be caught a little bit off guard this year because ATM is not enough already because they will need to digitalize even the loan repayment. And this... Um, Building digital ecosystem is not only a work for those who serve the clients such as SECDEP. Other stakeholders, of course, such as the government, the private sectors are also working in making this transformation happen. 
barriers are not only to the client side, but as presented by Kim earlier in the Women Link results, community agents also face unique challenges uh, with the increase in demand for their services. I think this is also briefly mentioned by Ms. Luz with a constant need to educate even the community agent providing the services to the clients. And addressing such concerns, of course, is key to ensure continuous provision of trustworthy digital financial services to the clients. To present to us um, further strategies and, and how do they respond to the urgent needs for the digitalization and how do they respond to the challenges faced by the community agent networks or their retailers, we, we would like to introduce our next speaker, Jerwin Laviles, Head of Product Design and Development Group of Action.Able Inc. Jerwin, when you are ready. Okay, uh, thank you, Erica. Good day to everyone. My name is Jerwin Laviles. I'm with uh, Product Design and Development at ActionAble, aka Possible. I'd firstly want to thank Grameen Foundation and the Women Link Program team in particular for the opportunity to be part of this webinar. Um, ActionAble was established in 2015. We are better known as Possible, Filipino for possible. This brand name highlights the hope-filled and can-do attitude that we espouse. It is also a play on words, integrating the term um, POS or point of sale. We aim to transform the country's economy by empowering the ubiquitous neighborhood store with our technology, our um, business in a box. At present, we have around 8,000 deployments throughout the country. Quite a number of fintechs, um, even banks, provide excellent offerings to bank the unbanked, extend credit to the unscored, and even supply digital farm-to-table routes. As Apple famously put it, there's an app for that. And consumers these days need only take a small step, no longer a giant leap to shift to digital. Yet, the Philippines is still very much a cash-based economy. Electronic money issuers provide convenient in-app cash-in facilities linked to bank accounts or credit cards but their number one channel for top-ups is still over-the-counter cash transactions at convenience stores. Um, further, the neighborhood or sari-sari store remains as relevant as ever. Until now, multinational fast-moving consumer goods companies still devote entire business units and large budgets for this segment. Traditional trade marketing has not disappeared. In fact, physical direct-to-consumer sellers, such as market stall vendors, have had personal engagement with their customers long before social networks came about for brands to personally engage their market base. It is this model or soul, if you will, of the traditional small store that big business and now fintechs have been trying to emulate, be it for customer loyalty, micro or nano credit, point of sale cross or upselling, and the like. The fintech sector is increasingly involving physical points of sale through O2O or online to offline initiatives. Indeed, the last meter, not the last mile, the last meter in the supply chain is the shopkeeper and uh, this person is a powerful person indeed when it comes to retail. So it would only do us good to recruit this community retailer to our cause if we are to spur uptake of digital in an everyday consumer's life. So this is where Pusible hopefully comes in. We provide a platform embodied in our box or device that levels up a standard sari-sari store um, with the digital capabilities of bigger or more established and sophisticated chain stores, which are typically located in um, commercial centers or busier residential districts. In, in our model, we find it essential to position the platform as a business that the retailer must invest in and tend to just like any other business. Um, retailers are provided with the tools they need to immediately provide digital services um, and to their community and generate income in the process. As a FinTech platform for community agents, we see Possible as a bridge between big business, including banks and other FinTechs and their customer or consumer. 
we like to think that we are building a b to b to c network that is big b or big business on one end through small b or small business the sari sari store in the middle and finally to consumer c on the other end as an example the two biggest electronic money issuers in the philippines gcash and paymaya rely heavily on physical cash based transactions uh, to reload customers electronic money accounts this may when the pandemic lockdown rules were much stricter uh, gcash reported a 700% increase in transactions versus the same period last year paymaya for its part reported double user registrations cash in or reloading for both gcash and paymaya is available on the posible platform and their reported growth was actually also reflected in transactions on our network as a <clears throat> as a matter of fact while we expectedly have fewer agents active during this time versus pre pandemic in absolute terms both transaction count and value are higher than ever our data shows that this increase in usage is driven mainly by the surge in e-money transactions by contrast prepaid mobile loading decreased as has um transportation ticketing the latter for obvious reasons the former mainly due to the increased adoption by consumers of um other digit sorry uh, by their adoption of e-money platforms which has taught them new ways to purchase and consume other digitally distributed products such as prepaid airtime action able is a registered uh, remittance agent of the bsp we have partnered with several big providers for both international and domestic remittance services we also support the initiatives of banks and the bsp for agency banking to extend more formal banking um, services to underserved sectors so presently we are partnered with rcbc basically possible agents can act as micro atms allowing card based cash withdrawals and transfers and balance inquiry we're working out similar engagements with other banks so while the market response has been encouraging especially when given the results from this bubble in time and space caused by covid-19 we know that there's much to improve on and a long way to go while we tout the simplicity of our business in a box the retailer's experience doesn't end with a device operational concerns like wallet rebalancing and transaction validation must be as accessible and responsive as possible technical glitches must be kept to a minimum no small feat considering the number of services and uh, finally the human touch that we hope to leverage by engaging agents to reach customers must also be present within in our own dealings with these actual agents covid-19 has highlighted the value of the business yes but it also has exposed certain shortcomings on the part of agents a uh, capacity to transact has been tested pre pandemic we could rely on 80% or so of our network to be active in and transacting in any given week since april of this year this figure is closer to 60% on the part of the company reduced mobility among other things has given rise to a uh, admittedly less responsive organization which may cause occasional frustration on the part of agents we serve now more than ever empathy coupled with efficiency is paramount both within and without the organization we continue to monitor our own performance and implement interventions we believe will help us better respond to the challenges of the day among these challenges is keeping our agents well informed and well equipped to do business both in good times and in bad a formal channel for retailer education was planned to be deployed this year but unfortunately was put on hold due to the pandemic for the last couple of points we in fact were taking our cue from gramin foundation and the women link program our network is composed predominantly of women and we appreciate the training extended as part of the program as well as the third party feedback generated which allows us to gain a better insight into our network we're certain that our retailers are likewise appreciative of programs like women link which provide concrete measures to help them better themselves um just last week we had a workshop with the women link program team and we were provided a fresh look at our business especially in light of the situation brought about by covid-19 
uh, situation which I think we can all agree might remain for quite some time. And um, oddly, ironically, um, fortuitously, this situation has highlighted Pusibles' vision to transform bricks to clicks. The oft-referred to new normal, the new normal in terms of what we do is actually a good normal with more consumers transacting digitally within their communities. Um, but of course, uh, pardon the slide, in spite of all the talk of digital, we must remember that digital is not the natural human experience. As any home audio aficionado will attest, if there's any uh, among us here, digital only approximates analog. And in this case, analog is real life. It is face-to-face -face transactions. It is face-to-face -face interaction and even with masks on. Um, so this is what is possible with agent networks like Possible, hopefully. It is digital with a human touch. So yeah, um, thank you and have a good rest of the day. Thank you so much, Jerwin, for walking us through on Possible and highlighting the efforts done to retain agent transactions as it is needed more than ever. And more than that, thank you for your honesty on the challenges encountered and what are the key work in progress to really ensure provision of smooth support to your agent and retailers. I think we have we have been able to really establish that from the experience of SecDep that, it, that um, the services offered by your retailers or by what by what we refer the community agents are really important um, to make the transition on the client side. So it's really um, good to have a fresh um, point of view from the fintech provider on what are the what what might be the limitations at the moment and what are the key work that must be done going forward to ensure that services are being provided um, smoothly and we can really build the trust. For, for client update. Um, I think we have a few questions on the Q&A. Um, so uh, everyone, um, before I go through with a few questions we have right now, if you have any feedback or questions with the presentations we have so far, please feel free to put it in in the question and answer chat box. So um, this is a question pro, for SecDef, uh, Ms. Luz. How did your clients reacted to the transaction cost for payments through PayMaya or Possible? Or maybe, Ms. Luz, you can start first with maybe expounding with us. What are What is the digital payment you're currently using uh, for, for the loan repayment? And as, as, and as questioned by Miss um, Estrella Andres, how did your clients react to the transaction cost in using this platform? Yeah, uh, we are using the the PayMaya platform wherein the uh, the selected agents are using. So uh, if a client pay her loan, she would go to the PayMaya agent and then the transaction cost is not much because uh, the PayMaya agent herself uh, had um, had a what you call this a tarifa for every transaction. So and and then some other some other clients has de had themselves the app of the PayMaya and they load their wallet and then send mm -hmm. it to to the PayMaya agent or even send it to the PO and the PO or, or the project officer would. Uh, would go to the bank and then withdraw that money and directly deposit mm -hmm. collections in, in the bank. So with PayMaya to PayMaya, I think there is no there is no cost if you have the app of the PayMaya and the other one has the applications of the PayMaya. There, so far as I as I have experienced, there is no uh, fee or transaction mm -hmm. cost unless otherwise an agent would be facilitating your payment. So he would, she would get some uh, service fees. Thank you so much, Ms. Luz, for that clarification. Ms. Luz, if you can expound a little bit more in the presentation earlier, maybe a few of our participants are also curious. Uh, <laughs> um, Follow-up question. From Mrs. Rale Andres, um, how did you open a PayMaya account for SecDep? And maybe you have cited that 
um, this transition was uh, was faced with reluctance for some of the members. So in creating this PayMaya account and creating loan repayments mechanism through PayMaya, uh, what are the key challenges encountered? And maybe for the challenges that you are able to address already, what are these challenges and what are the strategies that um, that you have done? Um, yes, we, we had lots of challenges even that uh, in opening the PayMaya account. We selected a few, one for, as I mentioned, one, uh, uh, one agent per brand to serve as a model. And also POs who under the, the center who is um, selected as a model. And then they were guided how to do it. So motivations, education, um, uh, they set up an application in the cell phone, Android cell phone, mostly of our clients also, although majority has the, the, the uh, keypad cell phones, but uh, we started with those clients that we have the, 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 the smartphones. So if you, uh, um, what do you call it? download the app of the Paymaya, so you can start now. Oh, our challenge is on the IDs. Because during the time when the, uh, um, when the, during the early days when the application was, uh, when we encourage applications in their cell phone, uh, they cannot do transactions if they don't have even one valid ID, the government issued ID. So they cannot transact, they cannot get, they can just receive and claim it in the 7 Eleven or in the Smart Padlala, but they cannot transmit or re remit payments to others. So those are our challenges. So we just encourage them for the meantime. We've been, you know, also that uh, we shared to you how are we going to, to make these things a little bit uh, easier so that we can, uh, we can uh, motivate more clients to be able to, to have this app so that it would be easy to have transactions so we just motivate them to do uh, like uh, because the government IDs like the the easiest way is the postal ID, the post. But then later the postal ID also would take months to be released. So we just keep on holding on this and then trying how are we going to face it. So what they're doing is if they have the app of the Paymaya. As experience also during the release of uh, the pandemic uh, support, we encourage them that they have the PayMaya account so that we can send their money through their PayMaya account because we also, our staff, is using that so that transactions can be easy. So it, they are motivated to use the app so that they can easily receive their support. So, uh, and on the side of uh, the community agent, um, in the community agent, they have they they can transact, receive, and transmit or transfer money because they have valid mm -hmm. because they have registered uh, they have uh, the registered uh, agent. Our experience, the first experience that we had with this is during, I think it was a holiday June. It was a holiday and we have lots of money in the brands and the stuff. The following day is a, a Saturday and I said that would be a risk if you, the money will be there. So since they have the payment account, they load their that money. They went to 7-Eleven or phone shop and then they load the money inside their wallet and then send it to the head office and send it. <laughs> so that they are free already it's no longer the risk so we also although there is limit also i know there's maybe there's an attendant to pay my there is there are limits on how much you are going to send transfer money i think it's mm -hmm. 100 thousand something or i i can't i can't remember but that is our first experience that up, we appreciate it because our staff would not would not be at risk in the brands because they had no longer have the money and then they can go home on a weekend. So they transfer the money in their wallet and then transfer it to us for us to also to monitor that the money is safe. Uh, so, Ms. Lu, uh, 
Uh, can we just ask a follow-up question? Um, maybe to, I think, to clarify the question of uh, Ms. Estrella. Um, for SECDEP, as an organization, did you also open a PayMaya account or was it mostly um, individual accounts open? Actually, we had already the board resolution to open a PayMaya account. But for the meantime, we're just uh, checking on our personal PayMaya account. But the institution is, it's already maybe, I think it's already since during the time we do inquiry, mm -hmm. I think in July when, when the document was, uh, was already made and it's ready for, for I think I have sent, I, I don't know if I have sent to pay Maya the document, the board resolution and the registration for, because the institution itself is going to have the pay my account to be able to to closely monitor all those transactions from the field. Mm -hmm. Thank you I, so I, much, Ms. Luz, for... I, 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 I don't know if I have answered Montreal my, the question. I think she also mentioned, Ms. Luz, that she'll connect you further uh, for any clarification. But I think, Ms. Luz, you have um, set up uh, a good brief um, layout of your journey on how is it done currently right now and moving forward. As you have mentioned, it is your target to really create an MFI account so that the payments will be coursed through that instead of the staff account, which is currently being done right now. But maybe just one last question from my end, Ms. Luz. It is really important when you mention that you yourselves, the staff, the MF, uh, the SECDEP um, branch um, staff, and then even maybe the management tried the platform themselves before introducing it to the client. Um, have you done any um, trainings as well for your staff to really capacitate them first in using this digital uh, platform, PayMaya, before you introduce it to the clients? Because I think um, it's really important to really start with the person representing or introducing those tools to the clients to be really um, be equipped with what are the functions, what are the security features, and uh, to really um, explain its viability to your clients. Um, initially, we had we first encountered this pay Maya when we, Mr. Kenneth and GF mm -hmm. went to the office. <laughs> that was the time we know about pay Maya. After that, uh, it was in passing, but I said, why not try and then have an experience so that we can, we can say yes or no, or share some difficulties. So we are like me, I started to, to make the app and then use it. And then during branch managers meeting, I asked the branches, do you have already? Because we are you we're going to send, we had tried. And uh, your, Mr. Kennedy, I think, gave us the orientation on how PayMaya is working. And then after that, we ourselves just share, you just transmit it's a sort of what we know, what I know, I share it with the branch manager and the branch manager shared it to the PO and the PO transmitted the clients. Aside from the trainings mm -hmm. that we had with, with the 10 pilot uh, uh, agents. So it's a, a sort of transmitting and if there are problems, they would throw back. Uh, why is it that we are not, uh, my, my account was lost or I can could no, no longer do transactions because it seems like I made a wrong thing. So proper the proper education or orientation was only the first thing with the court group. After that, we transfer and transfer. It's a sort of and I know uh, the the project officers assigned in the areas of mm -hmm. that um Pilot agents were also educated during the process of uh, your education with with uh, yeah. agents. They still they themselves also were educated and made follow up on how the payment is working. Um, if the client or the agents has some problems, they would support and they would 
I know the, you are doing the regular meetings with them. So mm -hmm. they know what they are going to do and it motivates them looking forward that, oh, next week we're going to have a meeting. They got some sort of jet done of questions. We're going to ask them. So it really helps the, the continuous and the regular meetings with them, our POs and also uh, our clients, our agents, I mean. Thank you so much, Ms. Duz. And indeed, um, those meetings with your project officers really helped out in coursing through the learnings to your uh, to the Paymaya SecDep agents that we also onboarded through this partnership. And um, hopefully, we, um, this um, effort that you're able to introduce to your clients can really uh, work around. And um, we are excited to see how the loan repayments can be really be made um, through digital going forward, even, uh, even after all of these restrictions that we are facing right now. All right. Thank you so much, Ms. Luz. Um, I think we have a few questions for Possible as well, Jervin. Um, I think from Ms. Jell. Um, is Possible API ready? What are your requirements to facilitate this? And can transaction cost be reduced for affordability? Uh, okay. So firstly, yes, Possible is API ready. So depending on the specific transaction that we want to be able to process, like it's either Possible provides the API to our partner or it's our partner who provides the API to, API to us. But um, short answer is yes, we are API ready. Um, requirements for it, um, like again, typically it would be dependent on the specific transaction that we're looking at. If it's like a biller transaction, it would be the usual um, requirements that, um, that a biller would, would provide to, to a collection partner which typically would really just be the fields, um, the information or data fields that need to be collected from the customer, account number, stuff like that. So this one, it's really more like a, um, a, a discussion regarding like the details uh, to, of that transaction. Um, short answer, yes, we can work um, with, uh, with APIs and we can work like with uh, adjusting our requirements to, to specific partners. As for like, um, was it transaction fees, um, Erica, or the transaction costs? Uh, transaction costs. The, okay, as far as transaction costs are concerned, um, we we follow like the market standard, and uh, yeah, we're 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 typically like calibrated with regard to, for example, if it's like a of how an an electric utility cooperative like uh, would would. Um, afford X amount and that's the typical um, transaction cost for collection, then that's what we follow. Uh, in, in our case, <clears throat> I, I think as you understand, we do have like an agent network. I think um, uh, Ms. Luz mentioned this earlier also, like sometimes the agents uh, also like adjust their own, um, what's, what's your term, tarefa, uh, Ms. Luz? The, yeah. yeah, they're their own, their own, effectively their own service fee, if you want to call it that, or convenience fee, if you want to call it that. But from what we have observed, like by and large, like our agents follow what their market can afford. So um, in terms of like the transaction cost, I think it's something that uh, in the end, it's going to like settle into what the market can, can accept. Because like obviously, like if it's too high, then no one's going to transact. There would be no customers. If it's too low, then the agent will not be able to... Um, uh, recoup their investment or their 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 like capital that they put in. I, I hope that answered that question. Thank you so much, Jerwin. Sorry, I forgot to put a little bit context, but Ms. Chell um, is from Ahon, so Europe Incorporated, or ASHI, which is one of our uh, microfinance institution partners for Farmer to Farmer, or one of our far, far agriculture programs, rather. Um, Sarah, if you have any follow-up questions on that, please feel free to put it in in the Q&A question. But Jorin, we have another question for you. Um, what are the what are possible strategies in addressing the shortcomings mentioned earlier? Um, given that the community agents act as the front facing of possible services, it can be assumed that they are the ones who receive complaints from clients. Okay, yeah. Um, so 
firstly, uh, uh, I briefly mentioned it, I think, or maybe alluded to it. We basically um, want to have like a system, firstly, that works as reliably as possible. Like if our own technical platform is free from, from problems, from like uh, issues, connectivity, uh, bugs and stuff, then obviously there's going to be like a, a, a lot less in terms of like problems at the front line. Um, so that's one thing. We're trying to ensure that like our, our system is reliable and is like available basically like uh, whenever it needs to be available. Number two is like the proper communication and the proper and timely communication mm -hmm. of any like advisories regarding if a specific service, for example, will be will be unavailable uh, on a certain day, for example, like a Sunday or like um, Wednesday night or something like that, which sometimes happens like either on a scheduled basis or on an emergency basis. And in most cases, it's actually because like our partner, our partner Biller or our partner digital, um, uh, digital goods provider is doing their own maintenance or has their own like um, emergency maintenance event. So um, we're, we're trying to streamline. Uh, actually, we, we do already have like an advisory system in place. But um, one of the things that we're noticing is that sometimes, I guess since like our agents are like so used to seeing this, um, like I think suppose like even us, like all of us here who like does email a lot of the time, there's some emails uh, like the automated emails that, so, that look so familiar that you just like skip them and don't read them anymore. So this is actually like one of the challenges that we have. Um, because we're 100% sure that we send some advisories yet. In some cases, uh, we do get like feedback from our retailers telling us, you, you never let me know that uh, why is this service down? You didn't tell me, but it's actually like in their inbox and they, they didn't like look at it. So we're, we're trying to be creative there. Um, we want to be able to mix it up so that there would, it would be like a different look, if that makes sense for the agent, so that when they, when they see an advisory that they actually read it. Um, number three, and maybe like lastly, is streamlining our, our like, uh, we do have like a support, uh, a support line, like we have a customer service group that, uh, that our agents can connect with, uh, um, like mentioned earlier, because of like mobility issues, like maybe like right now, we're not at the same level as like pre pandemic, but, uh, we're, we're streamlining it so that it will be more efficient vis-a-vis our agents um we're we're doing some analysis also like of our network in terms of like um who among maybe like if there's like a certain profile of our uh, I, I think that that was in that was in one of the slides earlier that um i think that's from you erica like tiering tiering like uh for like uh, educating our retailers there must be like some sort of tiering in terms of like uh, how do we educate them how do we keep them abreast maybe like of like uh information that they need to know. So it's something that we're actually looking at. So we're, we're analyzing our network and we in fact are actually seeing certain tiers already, um, certain segments where maybe uh, there, this particular segment needs a different approach. This one needs a different approach. So that's one thing that we're looking at right now. So in terms of strategy of being able to effectively communicate with and empower and equip our agents to, you know, to face challenges like, like those that you mentioned. I hope that uh, that uh, fairly. Thank answers. you so much, Jerwin. And maybe, yes, I think just expand a little bit more on what um, Jerwin have shared and and pointing it back to the women link um, results that Kim has shared earlier. What we have implemented um, this year and in the women links year two is actually a one training module set for all of the agents that we tried to train. Um, that includes Possible and our other FinTech partners, agents as well, including DigiPay and PayMaya with SecDep. Um, but as, as mentioned by Jerwin, what we're um, trying to piece out together um, in the insights of our implementation this year is how to really develop those modules in such a way that it really corresponds to the needs of particular agents, um, more on segmenting these agents based on their needs. So um, what we're looking to right now, and of course, this will be incorporated in the final report of WomenLink, 
is how to segment these agents maybe um, according to their business experience, according to their um, educational um, or literacy level, and what are and more specifically, what are the services that they're offering to their clients at the moment? So um, it, it's highly dependent on the services as mentioned by Jerwin because um, of course when you're offering like e-money or um, cash in cash out services that requires a certain set of skills for you to check the the requirements like uh, following BSP and AMLA's um, uh, policies what what you should be keen in checking and making those transactions versus an agent uh, making uh, airtime bills payment um, transactions so definitely we're looking into segmenting the agents and working with our partners in, um, into that uh, yep uh, okay um, I think we have <laughs> um, another question is just wondering why Gcash is not included. I think um, just to answer that very quickly, Gcash is uh, actually onboarded in, um, in Possible's platform, German, right? If you would want to share more on that. Um, cash in and cash out on Gcash is actually embedded in Possible's platform. But um, yes, yeah, so, um, unfortunately, uh, Women Link was not able to partner directly with Gcash in this implementation. Yes, yep. Gcash but, is uh, uh, Erica is available on on, on Possible and like uh, I think they are they are connected to like the 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 Instapay network. So that's the interesting and where we're living in interesting times when it comes to digital. I think the BSP did a really good job in getting like um, all of the different banks and like uh, electronic money issuers, non-bank financial institutions into like working together. So I think we've all heard of like Instapay, Pesonet, the NRPS, National Retail Payment System. So like everyone's working together and like digital is coming. So like that's where the, the that's where things are moving in terms of like um, financial transactions. Thanks, Jerwin. And yes, um, going forward, as mentioned by Kim earlier, um, as a key strategy of Grameen Foundation, we're looking to really set up like a community agent network, um, um, agent manager. So we would re we we're really keen in partnering up with, uh, with different fintech providers, with different e-money or e-wallet platforms here in the Philippines. Um, it's just, uh, we're, we're working on that. I think um, in the past few weeks, so, uh, we've started engaging with a few other fintechs and hopefully we will be able to really uh, map out the services and the assistance needed by all of these um, key actors to really build on that trust um, for the clients and of course um, building that uh, business viability for our community agents. All right, um, we're almost at the top of the hour, but thank you so much for Really engage for a really engaging question and answer segment. And thank you, Ms. Luz and um, Jerwin, for answering those questions um, and expanding more on the presentation that you have shared earlier. Um, I think just to close out this um, session, uh, more than ever, I think we were able to highlight the need for a face for technology in our communities, as mentioned by Ms. Luz. Um, it's really important for them. Um, as um, SecDev staff and the agents that um, that they also uh, we also onboarded as part of Women Link to be trained to be equipped and for for possible side their key at the moment are mainly sari sari stores or those who are part of like smaller or uh, medium um, businesses and to put in a digital um, technology to equip them to provide more, more services on that. So the need for community agent and community agent network is really um, highlighted in our session as of now. And to, to give us uh, a, a bigger picture on how Grameen works with community agent, this is, not, this is something not unique in the Philippines actually. Uh, we are also working in building community agents in our different programmings around the world. Um, and of course, um, as briefly mentioned by Kim earlier, the need to support these micro entrepreneurs now, given that they're also affected by the restrictions, by uh, uh, of course, by the COVID-19 pandemic, what are the efforts done currently by Grameen Foundation to support the micro entrepreneurs? Um, let me introduce you, Christine Violago, our Philippine country manager. Christine, when you are ready. 
Thank you so much, Erica. And thank you again, Jerwin and Ms. Luz for joining us in this session. Um, next slide, please. I'm happy to present to you the different financial services initiatives of Grameen Foundation across um, our different offices. I think um, personally, I joined Grameen in 2016, having to be part of this. And I'm always glad to see how we're evolving um, and also adjusting to the different needs of our times. Digital financial services is not just about opening bank accounts. It's actually providing a secure way and making, making sure that households, particularly women and their businesses, have access to a varied range of financial services. It allows them to be more confident and also allows them to have the right information so that they can make better decisions, not just only for their business, but also for their selves, for their children, and for the community at large. So in line with our efforts, I think this is what makes Grameen Foundation different or what sets us apart from other NGOs is we have a digital component and we make sure that each and every person that is part of our program um, is able to journey with us to not just digital financial literacy, but also digital education. Next slide. In India, we have the female agent networks called the Grameen Mitras. Mitra in India actually means friend. And I was actually um, lucky enough to, to visit this network of agents early in January and see how they themselves are playing a part in making sure that the community is able to access a various range of financial services. Um, in 2020, they've reported that 340 Mitras or community agents are transacting to more than 350 clients. In one of the villages I visited in Gurgaon, one community agent actually serves about 200 households. And that for me was um, already a, a big picture of uh, how they play an instrumental role to making sure that other people are informed and other people are, have access to financial service. They process transactions for about $200,000 and continuously Grameen Foundation has been providing um, literacy and education to them through the GLEAP platform, which is also a mobile platform device. Next slide, please. In the Philippines, back in 2016, we actually launched the Community Agent Network, which is supported by JP and Morgan Chase Foundation. Um, Action Able was also part of this engagement. And through this, we were able to onboard closely to 2,000 agents. And now, until this day, we're tracking 6,800 agents. The Financial Services Initiative of Grameen is very much in line with the National Strategy of Financial Inclusion by the Central Bank. And here, we're looking in the increase of usage, um, access, and improvement of the welfare of our clients. So, Part of our engagement there was even going through different um, caravans or um, campaigns through barangays and making sure that not only are we introducing the Sari Sari store as the agent in the community, but making sure that the people are aware that these services already exist. Because I think no matter how nice your technology is, if people are, don't know about it or get to know and, and be familiar or be comfortable about the service, they're not going to use it. So I think the first step is making sure that education is in place, um, as simple as an SMS campaign or a caravan or a Facebook uh, messaging will really help and go a long way. In the first two years of CAN, we looked at the, the, the service um, network um, completed 4.3 million transactions valued at 1.3 billion pesos. So these transactions range from bills payment, remittance, payment of um, utilities and electricity platforms, both in the rural and urban poor communities. Next slide, please. So we're also present in Africa and particularly here we wanted to focus on the engagement in Uganda, supported by the Global Systems for Mobile Association, or GSMA, and MTN Uganda. So here, Grameen developed a digital literacy training curriculum targeted to the refugees living in West Nile. And Uganda 
here, we wanted to increase their adoption of mobile financial services. We presented a curriculum that aimed to enhance um, understanding and the comfort with mobile financial services available in Uganda and increase the capacity to use basic phone applications as well. We also piloted to serve an entry point for rural and vulnerable populations with a very low or not, no digital literacy to begin to um, to productively utilize mobile and internet service as tools to improve their income and health education outcomes. We also, um, it, it, we also provided a savings and mobilizations initiative lending efforts, and, and we call this the financial sector deepening in Uganda or FSDU, wherein um, we extended formal savings and credit financial services to refugees living in the West Nile region via a digital linkages to savings groups. So we tested a savings groups model. And we use Grameen's proprietary ledger link solution, wherein Grameen is leading to develop two products, which is to introduce a digital group savings wallet linking groups to formal savings accounts to the cent um, to their central bank and the digitization of savings group operations, enabling savings groups to link to formal credits at the RUFI or the Rural Financial Initiative um, Digital Linkages Savings Groups. Next slide. So as Park again mentioned, um, this year has been very interesting and um, in, in a way that we are trying to adjust the type of solutions we present. With the COVID-19 pandemic that's happening, we wanted to make sure that women entrepreneurs are continued to be supported. And we work closely with two MFIs, um, Ahon Sahirap Incorporated and Ramon Aboyti's Microfinance Institution, um, in pre-selecting 3,500 micro-entrepreneurs to receive immediate relief and long-term recovery assistance to um, individual entrepreneurs who are at risk during the time of COVID-19. So in presently in Metro Manila and Cebu, um, th th through the past few months, we initiated an immediate relief program wherein we provided uh, grocery packages and medicine packages to this group so that they can either provide for their household or provide support as inventory to their stores. And this it was partnered with an SMS campaign wherein each MFI member or entrepreneur would receive both health tips and reminders as well as financial um, advice so that they can continue and make their business sustainable. As part of our second phase and a more long-term phase for the microfinance institution, we're introducing the Resilient Life, Resilient Business Curriculum. Next slide, please. So what is the Resilient Life, Resilient Business Curriculum? It is actually a 14 module um, that we've adopted in the Philippines. And it is a 14 module that focuses on a recovery or crisis management response. And this was developed first under the U.S. Department of um, State-funded wage, or what we call the Women and uh, Women and Girls Empowerment Initiative, and through the support of um, through the support of the U.S. Department of State, this was initiated first in Honduras and El Salvador. The Resilient Life, Resilient Business curriculum is designed to support a women entrepreneur holistically by addressing her gendered roles, the constant threat of shocks and stress she faces in everyday life, and by providing her with the tools to thrive as a woman micro-entrepreneur in the ever-changing um, environment that we are part of. It we are currently experiencing. And often these are unstable environments. And now more than ever, the personal and business resilience are key to protect women micro entrepreneurs, their families and their livelihoods. So as you can see in this screen here, we're actually looking into uh, four frameworks or four approaches, looking into the first the resilient person, how they can address their different gender roles, example, um, I'm taking care of my family, but I'm also taking care of my business. So how do I approach this differently? The second is the resilient life. How do we make sure that we're prepared in the different types of shocks? This year, everybody experienced COVID-19. That's only the one type of shock. There are other types of shocks that can be experienced, including natural disasters, death of a family member. And how are our women entrepreneurs ready to face these types of shocks? 
Second is the resi third is the resilient business. So part of our goal in Grameen is to make sure that we continue to support livelihoods. And this looks now into the cost and recovery revenue streams of the different um, uh, businesses. And they would be thought on how to manage their cash flow and that their debt capacity as well. And lastly, is the last approach is growing their business. How can they expand their business by making sure that they are maximizing the uh, the use of the different tools available for them, both digital and um, traditional types of tools. So with this framework, we're hoping that um, through the support of JP Morgan and Chase Foundation, again, we are able to maximize the reach um, and uh, roll out and plan this out to more microfinance institutions or not even MFIs, but also other cooperatives and anyone with a uh, a women entrepreneur at the center of their work, we're very much happy to support them as well. So at the end, again, I think um, as Crimean Foundation, we're always um, looking for organizations that are aligned with our mission in supporting women, supporting businesses, but also having a holistic approach in making sure that there's an embrace of technology and social touch in our programs. So if you're interested, feel free to contact us after this um, webinar. Erica, I turn Thank over you to so you. much, Christine, for um, expanding more on our uh, efforts in making use of, of community agents and really equipping these agents with the proper tools and training needs to really correspond in helping their villages or their uh, the clients that they serve. Um, in, var in our various programming. As mentioned by Christine, um, this uh, model is also implemented in India and of course in Africa and the refugee community. So um, with this, we are uh, glad to have um, joined by a lot of attendees and we are um, presented with unique barriers and challenges throughout the discussion of this webinar. But I think based on our discussions, based on the in really engaging question and answer um, earlier, we are also presented with great opportunities. Um, right now, there's a lot of effort from the government side with the pilot of the national ID system. And of course, BSP's continuous drive for digitalization of payment. And of course, not to discount the efforts of various sectors like the one um, have done by SecDep in their um, effort to digitalize their loan repayments. And of course, possibly in um, corresponding and being aware of the needs of, of the retailers that they serve. So with this with, and with everyone's help, key stakeholders and participants uh, who are in this session, we are uh, we would like to enjoin everyone to continue to work or if possible as mentioned by Christine to work with us to, towards economic empowerment leveraging of course um, on the transformational use of technology um, and digital payments in, in our programming um, thank you everyone for joining us today um, stay tuned for updates and information about our next webinar you can access our website at greenfoundation.org slash take um, action register for an event for upcoming web webinars and events and as mentioned earlier the on-demand um, video of this session will be uploaded in your mean foundation's youtube channel we will also be sending an email to all the participants in a few days for a link to the reports mentioned um, in the presentation all right. Um, have a great um, evening and the rest of your day for those who are joining us in different time zones. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you so much. God bless.